I just love Bangalore. Most people don't say they love Bangalore because they're not from Bangalore today. Bangalore is a little India. We have people from all over India in Bangalore, perhaps a lot of people from abroad also. It is an international city. One of my favorite subjects is my city, Bangalore or Bengaluru. This episode is partly an oral history of the city and it features a charismatic resident who's been part of the city's evolution. If you're on the roads of Bangalore today, you wouldn't believe it. But about 50 years or so ago, there were only about a thousand cars here. Among the rare people who owned a car was a dapper and dashing young man who raced his Jaguar XK150 to victory. He's all of 90 years old now and he's still a striking figure. He's had a very exciting and fulfilling life in business and politics and he's contributed to the making of this bustling metropolis. We're recording this interview in one of the modern landmarks of Bangalore that he's built, the popular shopping mall of Safina Plaza. The guest on today's show is Dr. Haji Abdul Sattar Seth, who was born in Bangalore in September 1933. He is the seventh generation of his family of Kachi Memons, who migrated from Kach, which is in modern Gujarat. Welcome to the show, Dr. Seth. How was Bangalore when you were growing up here? Well, when I was a young man, going to the school, I had to move from school to school at the beginning. I went to Kamlabai Girls School. Then we shifted to Mysore because Bangalore is a target area for war. Are we talking about the Second World War, when Bangalore was a base for the Royal Air Force? There I went to AHB school and then my parents moved me to Good Shepherd Convent where I met Mother Rose and I kept my connection with her. A lot of times when she came into the hospital in Bangalore and was helping out over there to physiotherapy cases. And I was delighted to meet her last time. I had invited her to come to my wedding also. I have the letter from her that she's unable to come and wishing me all the best. It's wonderful that you retain those connections with people. Is it something that you continue to do? I don't want to be lonely at this age. I am friendly with some of my friends' children and grandchildren. And I enjoy doing that. It can't be helped. Otherwise, I'll be the lonely soul. That's a great attitude to have. You also have foresight that helped you grow your business. How did you get from motorsports to selling one of the most iconic motorcycles in India? It happened so that I had gone to Pune Deccan Motorsports Club with my Fiat car to participate in a race. There they were not allowing me inside. For what reason, I don't know. Then somebody pointed out, talked to that gentleman over there. Mr. Noshir Irani, who was the president of the Deccan Motorsports Club. So I went and told him, my car and my participant, they're not letting me go. He said, don't worry. He sat on my bonnet and said, drive. He sat on the bonnet of yeah. your car. <laughs> and said, drive. So I drove into the track and we lost to park somewhere till our turn, our race came because there are several races. <clears throat> and there was the beginning of a friendship and connection with the Irani family. You were the first one to have a store that sold the bikes here, sold them and serviced them here yes. in Bangalore? I met Mr. Noshir Irani, who put me onto his elder brother, Farooq Irani. But he made a condition, you win the race, then I'll consider giving you the agency. Introduce you to my brother. Otherwise, don't come back and see me. I won the race, came back when I went to Mysore a couple of times. I met Farooq and his wife, Sheila, at the sports club. I remember the day I saw Fields yesterday. He took a liking for me and he appreciated my effort to go straight to him instead of trying to come through anybody else. What made the Java bike so special? That's the will of God. Okay. That was the best bike at that time. Mm-hmm. There was only Rajdoot, Java and Lambretta. So we all thought sitting on Lambretta is like sitting on a commode. <laughs> a real man should go on a motorbike. And you drove motorbikes yourself? Did you race on them too? No, I didn't race much on them. But I dr- did drive them, sold them, demonstrated it. I went to my own work on a mobile whenever I felt like. How was it to drive around in Bangalore in those days? It was quite easy, not tough. I could go from here in my Fiat car to the airport in six minutes, HL airport. In six minutes? Six minutes flat. Of course, I was a rash driver, <laughs> but I could reach it in six minutes without any problem. All right. So, which was your favorite car that you like to drive? And all cars were favorite. I had a Fiat 
which I had souped up for the races, that would make the noise and people would... Know like, from a long distance that... Something is happening. <laughs> it would cheer them up, like the roar of a lion. Then I bought a Jaguar 150. I won most of the races, even beating a driver who was better than me, Hari Harun. It's a question of risk you take on that day. And also participated in the same race was Maharaja of Gundal with his 300 SL Mercedes Benz. It was a far superior car than my Jaguar 150, perhaps. But that day, my car is the one that performed. Fantastic. So I think it's also your determination to win that would have seen you through. Whatever you do, you want to be the best. You don't succeed all the time because there are jealousies. There are others wanting to overtake you. People who want to come in the way. They want to take away the charm which you have got or the ideas which you have got. They want to demolish you sometimes. But I think you have succeeded in many things that you put your hand to. I, I remember the iconic landmark before you built Safina was your petrol station. And even now, when I have to give directions to people, I keep telling them, oh, take a left at Haji's. And people say, what is Haji's? And I say, oh, yeah, th that bunk is not there anymore. But in my mind, Haji's always is at that spot on St. Mark's Road. That was a famous place. Right. How did you get the idea of building the Safina Plaza? Well, I had gone abroad and I was coming back from Hawaii and even shopping there with my wife. A narrow passage was there like this. And it was all a shopping center, a whole big walking street. I couldn't make a walking street in Bangalore. So my idea was make the best use of my house. I was just staying there with two kids, later on three kids. The house was very big, land was huge, taxes were high. So I said, let me put this to better use. I went to Bombay, engaged an architect to guide me. I was not very happy. Then I got introduced to Mr. I.M. Kadri, the famous architect. And he gave me some ideas and he drew up some plans. So I got going. And I think it's really stood the test of time because we all enjoy it even now. And like the idea that you had to make it pedestrian friendly, it seems to work like that. You don't feel you're in an enclosed mall because there's so many open spaces that people can enjoy. There have been art exhibitions too. No, so. my friend, Mr. Darwala. Right. Who was the manager of Weston. <clears throat> He used to have very good art exhibitions here. And even Sonia Gandhi has come here to visit the art exhibitions or in his room where he sold the, his gallery. Yeah, the Crimson Art Gallery. Yeah, Crimson Art Gallery. Wonderful. So the next thing that you did after building the uh, Safina Plaza here was you used your other land where you had moved from here to live. I think that's where you put up the Safina IT park. I had... Built a house there and the various inquiries for joint development. And they would give me finance to move out of my house, about a crore or two crores. At that time, for two crores, you could buy a house in Palace Orchards. Wow. Then I, may, I made a deal with one of the builders. The condition was he would not sell any of the property. He'll sell it back to me. Because by that time, my business would have given me a lot of savings here. I was also... I'll get clients there who will take the premises and rent would be there. And I could easily go to the bank for help. In the bargain, one builder said, I won't sell this to anybody because the best location in Bangalore and I'll keep it for myself. Another builder said, my job is to build and sell. The day I start construction, I'll start selling. I'm not mentioning their names out of respect for them. So anyway, I said, why not do it myself? My friend, Mr. Irfan, took me to Mr. Thomas, who was going to give a joint development. If I went to him, I liked the gentleman. He inspired me. So he gave the plan. I had lost some savings with me, with which I could start the job. I put in a tender. One of the highest tenders was Shapurji Palanji. I said, negotiate with him. We'll give it to him only, though it'll cost me more, because that'll give me a reputation and a name that India's best builder at least one of the best builders would build that. And I have a letter just before he passed away from Cyrus Palaji okay. that he recalls all the time whenever he is in Bangalore, Safina Towers, which is one of the best buildings in town. And unfortunately, two weeks later, he passed away. I knew him. I had met him also in Bombay. 
that is easy doing business. My friend, Mr. Bayramji, also helped us put together. And there it was. I was putting up the construction. One day on bank, I walked up to my place and asked me, what are you constructing? I said, commercial building. Have you got all the money? I said, no, I'll build as much as I can. And then I hope something will happen. I'll get some client and then with that money, I'll complete the balance construction. He said, why don't you come and meet me? He was my in the neighborhood. I'll give you a loan for whatever you're doing. He was from Canada Bank. So I got the loan. I finished the construction. I got a very good client in the beginning. Swiss Reinsurance, Amazon, who was still there with me, and many other good clients with their patronage, I have prospered. And I think you have helped them prosper too. Well, that is their effort. I think Jeff Bezos, when he came to India, the first time he came to Safina IT Park and you met him there. Yes, I received him and gave him a bouquet of flowers. How was he to talk with and be with? Oh, he was a very nice man. He had his kids with him. Mm-hmm. He had brought his own car. Oh, is that so? Yes. He had... At that time, his stock was being quoted at $60. Oh. <laughs> All right. Did you buy stock? No. No, you From didn't. India, we cannot buy anything abroad And then you time. couldn't, yeah. So that's one of the very few opportunities that couldn't come your way. I don't, I was not destined, so I didn't get it. Right. So now let's talk about how the name of Safina came about. Well, I had a very good f- friend. He was a planter. He was the steward of the Mysore Race Club. All right. William Jones. And I was sitting next to him and asked him, why have you named your horse Vidoma Koropedi? That's a very long name. Yeah. And widow is not right spelling or to start with on a horse. No, that's got nothing to do with any widow. These are the first two names of myself, my wife, and all my children. So I said, why can't I do that? My name is Satar. My son was Firoz. My wife's name was Nasima, And my daughter's name was Nasreen. And my elder daughter's name was also Sabrina. So Satar, Said, Sabrina. SA goes in there. FI comes Firoz. NA is Nasreen, my daughter. Nasim, my wife. Beautiful and such a, a musical and easy to remember. It must be soft, I thought, the name. I think you were right. We talked about horses just now. Tell me more about how you got into horse racing. You were a steward of the Bangalore Turf Club too. What got you interested? Well, I had a good friend, Mary R. Khalili. He was in the same business as me, oil. And we were friendly also. Come, let's go to races, he said. So I went with him. And in my childhood, we had horses here at Safina Plaza. Oh, you had horses in your house? You had stables? Yes. How wonderful. And we were compelled by my parents to go horse riding in the parade grounds here. We had a full sand track on the parade grounds from Queen's Statue to the other end where the army is occupied now. Right. There was a sand track on which you could go riding. Wow. And my neighbor, Mr. Jaffer said of Green Shop, he had a big horse. We didn't have such a big horse. So my brother and I had to go. So we went riding. Love for horses was there. And my dad also loved horses. He had one horse carriage by name Governor Scott. Oh. All those days, they were built by specialists with wood, teak wood, and other woods. So we had a governor's cart where you could get in and close the door, sit facing each other, and the coachman would drive you. Oh, how wonderful. I wish I were there in those days. Petrol prices are very high. On the petrol bunk, it is 10 and as a gallon. If you took a 10 rupee note, you could fill up the gas and come back with the change. In the black market, it is 10 rupees a gallon. And even that you could not get if you really needed some gas badly. So you chose to go in a horse-drawn carriage. So, love for horses was there. And one of my friends, he was from the royal family of Travanko, he pulled me to go riding in the riding school. So, I went there and started going riding. I assumed my love for the horses. And then when my friend Khalili invited me, I went to races. So, gradually, I said, let's see what it has for me. Then I met one of my father's friends or who knew him. He was a trainer, he was a leading trainer in India, Baba Khan. So I saw him. I said, Uncle, can you give me a good tip? Yeah, come. And he took me out, walked, 
and knocked me out of the race course <laughs> and said, this is the last time I'm seeing you. Don't ever gamble. He was a very friendly person. This is not good to gamble, he told me. Finally, he gave me, he said, back my horse, go. Okay. So I went and backed his horse. I had 1,000 rupees with me. I made 10,000 rupees, which is very big money. That sounds fantastic. So he actually gave you a good tip. So I came home, told my wife, I have made 10,000. Let's go to Kashmir. <laughs> oh, nice. Because income was not so high those days. A place like Safina Towers, I would get rent of about two, three hundred rupees. Finally, 450 rupees from HAL. Air Marshal Engineer was there. Air Marshal Ranjan Dutt was staying there as managing director of HAL. Mm-hmm. And the famous Hindi actor, Sam Sharoff. Jackie Sharoff. Jackie Sharoff. He was born there. Oh, I see. Oh. Mr. Ranjan Dutt had a Belgian wife. Which place are we talking about? Where it Sabina was Towers is. Okay. There's a bungalow. First, we had rented out during my period to the Commissioner of Police. It's then taken over by requisition by a minister, Chanabaswe Gowda. And then somehow I got it vacated. I gave it to HAL. They looked after the place very well. Finally, I managed to get it back. I turned that into a hotel, about 12 or 14 rooms. It went on for some time. I did well. I had built the house next to it. And I had the Bangalore club steward, Mr. Beliappa, old man. So I got him to manage the hotel because there are many rooms in Bangalore club and he was managing it too. So there I go. Wonderful. I started the hotel. It went on. Then we started giving it for weddings and marriages. Big crowds would come. And then finally, when the time came, I decided to break. Mr. Thomas said, you must knock off your house. Otherwise, there's not going to be a great building. I said, done. You didn't have any sentimental attachment to it? We have to forget sentiments. I still own the property. I'm sure if if I prosper, my parents would be happy, my forefathers would be happy. Let's talk about how you ended up in Bangalore. I know you're from a a very, uh, you know, entrepreneurial community, the Kachi Memons, who are always known for their acumen in business and also their enterprising spirit. They travel wherever they feel that they have a better prospect. How did your family come here to Bangalore? Well, we were in Kach and our profession there was to look after cows, the male ones and the female ones and get the milk and sell it and also sheep. And one year there were no rains. As we call in Canada, it was Badagala. Mm, there was a drought. Drought and uh, we had to sell away the, all the Kachimans were the same problem. So we had a priest there who was a descendant of Prophet Muhammad. So we went to him to seek guidance because we were selling away every day at least one sheep or one cow from this family or that family and what to do. He said, in Islam, hijrat mein barkat. In emigration, is where you can prosper. All those who are sitting around within the circle, chain link, will prosper. And I give you the name Seth. Said was always said to anybody who was prosperous. He said, all of you, said ban ke jiyenge. Hijrat karo, hijrat ne barkat hai. So, this is what I was told by my parents. We moved on to Bombay, Calcutta, Madras, Bangalore, some to Cochin, some to Telicherry. Anywhere there was a port. Except in Bangalore, of course. Madras to Bangalore was very close. So, we had business in Bangalore and in Madras. I have six generations of my forefathers' graveyard in Bangalore. They've been here for more than 200 years. This very, very property where we are sitting, we bought for 10,000 rupees about 100 years ago. I don't think one can get a room for 10,000 rupees in this. Yeah, there's no value for money now. So you have seen a huge change and I know you have also been making a change, not just by the businesses that you built and succeeded in, but also because... You've been involved in politics. How did you get into politics? And you've been a Congress supporter for a very long time. Well, in this school, there's a debate by Father Lewis, who was very well disposed to me. And the subject of the debate was, should English be the lingua franca of India after independence? So I was asked to speak on English should continue. I was speaking for the first time. Words were not coming out of my mouth. My legs were shivering. Somehow I made it. 
The Father Louis said, you're going to be a leader. You spoke well. You'll get over your shortcoming. Next time you start, stand for the class leadership. I won. Following year, I won again. So I was the recognized cheerleader for St. Joseph's. Here in Bangalore? In Bangalore. St. Joseph's Indian High School. Father Picardo was the principal. He was very fond of me. We got along well with each other. And whenever St. Joseph's playing a match, I would be there as the 12th man. That was good enough or not. We won all the games that one year, last year in the school. Hockey, football, athletics, 100 meters dash, mile race. One of the competitors at that time became a famous football player for the Indian team. My name Kempaya. This would have been M. Kempaya, who was considered one of India's best midfielders. Kempaya was twice part of the Indian national football team at the Olympics. So we had the school sports and we moved on from there. I came to college. First year, I stood for election. The people were there, all from other parts of the state. I was in the Commerce Department, though I wanted to take up arts. I lost the election. Next year, I stood again. I had a thumping victory. Third year of my college life, I decided to contest for the secretary of the entire college union. That's Commerce Department, which is on Andy Road near the hostel, and the main building, which was, it still is there, stone building. I won by over 1,000 votes. That gave me an opportunity to get on with life and break free. So we had to have the college union inaugural address. I said, you must choose a very big man to come and talk to the college. I got an appointment, went to meet Sarem Misvisaraya, who was the builder of Real Mysore. He was unfortunately not well because of his age. He was brought on a chair to meet us, but he was immaculately dressed with his turban and tie and suit. He said, at my age, I don't want to come in this condition. My good wishes are there. You will do well. Get on with life. Then we consulted, find somebody else. Then we heard that Mr. Rajgopalachari, the first governor general of India, was somewhere in Bangalore. So we located him and went to him. He was living in a very small house, Mm -hmm. not impressive, in one of the extensions. He was very nice to me, but he said, I'm out of politics now, and I can't go and make any speeches. My time is up. You will have to excuse me. Then I said, must do something else. Then we heard, let's go to the Chief Justice of the state, Justice Medup on Cunningham Road. We got an appointment. We were seated when we went there. He agreed to come, and there it started. So that was the beginning of you connecting with... Big people. And how did you enter politics as such? What I'll tell you. you. Then after, we decided when I was in college, we must participate in Goa Liberation Movement. So we teamed up with the secretary of the Mount Carmel College, Vimala Dorisami. I remember her name very well. And myself, I was the secretary of the college union. So we took out a huge procession from Brigade Road across MG Road, demanding that Goa should be liberated. That gave me the courage to get on with more. How was it received by the public? Your I thought well received. Okay. Nobody said anything wrong to me. Okay. Then I passed out of the college. That was the third year of my college, St. Joseph's. Then there was a chamber association. There there was a vacancy. You could stand for the corporation elections. I love to serve Bangalore. So I put in my name. All my college friends came and campaigned for me. I won the elections. Wonderful. (laughs) And that was the stepping stone. Yes. So I joined the Congress. That was the party to be with in those days. Absolutely. And my father was a... Congressman, I didn't think, I don't think I had a better choice than do what he was doing already. Two things I must mention here about my most favorite teacher in school who gave me all the courage was Father Picardo. In my high school, in my last year, in February, my mother passed away. He came to know that my mother passed away and he came home here. He stayed with me. He walked up to the graveyard in Nandidurg Road along with the funeral procession. He came back home, pacified me, sat down with me, and went back. That was a very generous act by him. I think That it's the gave people. me a lot of confidence. Yeah. It's the people who are there with us when the times are bad leave a greater mark on us. Several of others stood by us. My father's cousin, Mr. Mahmood. All of us stood by us. The next year, my father passed away, 55 52, my mother passed away high school. 
So there I was. I knew nothing about business. I had to manage the properties and take on. Then I bought the petrol pump with the help of Mr. Palia, with whom I had already joined the Lions Club. Service was the motto. Right. So that was good running the petrol pump. I thought that's the safest business. You could sell all your product, even though the profits were less. You didn't need to go have a sales team at all. The customers well, we come needed to, you. to have a sales team because the company set up a target. Oh. And since we reached the target, there's an attached showroom there, which they had converted old bungalow into a showroom in the front. So they gave it to me, complimentary, as part of the service station. I got my Java agency there. And then my son went and got DCM Toyota agency. We did well with that. You built all these businesses. Um, how did you develop in business? Is it because you had observed your father? My father was not very dynamic. He was this quiet man. Where do you think that spark came to you? Was it because you read about others or you observed others or is it an intrinsic part of your... It came naturally to me. That's really interesting to know. And I want to talk about how that spark led you to create a lot of positive change and the impact it created on Bangalore. I was the chairman of Taxation Finance Committee. It was 97 lakhs, not even one crore. That's it. Now it is 1,200. I don't know how much it is. But it's not enough. Whatever they have is not enough, apparently. To well, there I feel the government is wrong. Those days, the motor vehicle tax was given to the municipality because we maintained the roads. So it is our right to take the money and make the roads better. Now the government takes lifetime tax. One time, they have to pay up the money to the government. Maybe they have a reason for it. But I think all that money should come to the corporation so that we have good roads. I think that's a very, very valid point because that's the worst criticism that Bangalore faces. Each one of us who has to step out of home was always hampered by the lack of good public transport and by the lack of roads on which we can drive our own vehicles. Well, when I was a cooperator, I said you must have a circular railway in Bangalore. I couldn't think of underground train so people can travel easily from one part to the other, like it's in all the European countries. So you had suggested what we see now, the metro and then yes. they have now including in the, the council, rail wheels. I had made vehement demand for a metro. I was appointed metro chairman by Mr. Krishna. I thought nothing will come out of it. So I didn't accept that job. I don't have any record to prove. We do see the metro has made such a difference and just needs to move faster, I suppose, in completing the other parts of it. You also did, um, you know, suggest what we see now and what we enjoy now, the new international airport. Earlier, yes, we had I just demanded, this tiny one. I demanded an international airport. Thereafter, HAL became the international airport for a short time with the cooperation of the Air Force authorities. Then Bangalore International Airport was built. I'm sorry, the metro was not built to the airport at that time itself because I had seen in Hong Kong. You go check in your baggage in the city. It's in the plane. You have to board the plane, train and you go straight into the airport from where you board the plane and you travel. Your baggage is already in. You don't have to carry it. That would have been very convenient indeed. Metro connectivity to the new airport should have been a priority. Well, I made many suggestions. They were impl implemented after the time. Record proceedings of the council will tell you. I was the first one in India to demand Right of Information Act. What is so secret about it? It's our work, except defense. There should be no secrets. What's happening in the government, we should know. Whether it is the civil works, or the sewage treatment plants, or the gardening. Right of Information should give you that information. That is what a democracy is supposed to be. The citizens have a right Finally, to Finally, Mrs. Gandhi introduced it. But I didn't get any awards for the first one to suggest it. Not only I have suggested much before it was introduced, I even wrote to her. If there's one thing that you would like to change in the city today, what would it be? If you had the power to change something in the city, after all these years that you've seen it grow? It has to be evolved. Changing one thing is not going to solve any problem. So what would you suggest? Well, what I had suggested earlier, like in Delhi, there's a new Delhi and old Delhi. Long ago, we should have set up a new Bangalore. How was it received, the suggestion? Nothing happened. But I still suggested it. If near the new airport, 
They acquired 50,000 acres like Chandigarh. New city was built. A new city could have been built there. That would have certainly decongested the city or it would have avoided congesting the city entirely. Totally avoided the city congestion. Old Bangalore would have been maintained. Every Sunday we would get the army to play the band in the Kabul Park bandstand. Absolutely. I demanded that army should come and play Air Force, Mysore Police, but it's not happening. Yeah, they were, it was charming. I remember those days. We, we really look forward to those outings, especially the ceremony. Every Sunday, as children, we went there. There's a fountain there. We'd buy a balloon or some t- this thing. Go and listen to the army band. Sit down on the lawns. Enjoy and come back. But Do you think uh, all that didn't happen because the powers that be, the politicians of those days, lacked foresight? Which is why they never planned anything for the growth of the city. I don't know. I can't blame anybody. But you've been a builder yourself in many ways. I'm not a builder. I have developed only my property. Right. But you've developed it. You had the foresight. You knew what was going to come next. So similarly, had you got a bigger responsibility or a bigger role in the government, perhaps you could have done more. Did you not strive for it? I strived, but it was not possible. I had the majority with me for mayoral election. I was not given the opportunity by Congress. Because they had misgiving it to some other caste or community. I don't want to name that. Did you take deputy mayor? I didn't take it. But you did play a very crucial role, I think, in keeping the party together. I have heard that you held the party together by inviting the differing leaders to meet at your house. I'll tell you a small incident. Mr. Dev Rajas and Mr. Patil, who was the Congress president, were at loggerheads with each other. I was sitting and chatting. Dev Rajas was a good friend to me. I suggested, why don't you both make up? She said, I have no objection, he said. So I telephoned to Mr. Patil. Why don't you come to the CM's house, have a cup of coffee and resolve the issues? He said, my chappals will also not come to the CM's office, a house. Mr. Dev Rajas said, I will come with my chappals to Congress office. Tell him. <laughs> so we went to Congress office and all differences were resolved and they became friends. Okay. Even Gundarao became chief minister in this very place. Mr. Kharge had gone out of Congress along with Mr. Dev Rajas. Congress won all the parliamentary seats. So myself, F.M. Khan, Gundarao got together and said, let's get all our old legislators back and revive Congress. Why go for another election? So I went and got my best friend, Mr. Sikhar Taya, who commanded a lot of respect with the other MLAs. And he was my buddy. So I pulled him out from his house. And we started getting one by one, one by one. Mr. Kharge also rejoined the Congress at that time. Now he's the Congress president. So this whole thing of defection started many, many years ago. Not defection. People had defected out, they had to come back. Come back, right. The revolt had to be put down. I don't call that defection. They were had revolted because the leader was not treated fairly. There are things which I can't speak about sometimes. Do you think being in politics helped you make a big difference to the lives of people? I think I did. I helped many people get jobs. I get some people get without bribes by finding various ways where there are reservations, etc. for medical seat, engineering seat, architectural seat. Their lives are made. I did contribute to a thousand people. I accept it. But initially I was able to contribute. I think it's the it's a ripple effect, right? You help one person and that person helps five people and then... The word gets on. Right. So you've achieved so many things in various businesses apart from your, uh, you know, motorsports and your vehicles and your hospitality. So many different businesses. Of course, your, uh, you know, retail business and your IT park. What is the one thing that you feel... You could have done, but not done, when you look back at life. I could have moved on and been a builder, but that was not in my head. I didn't want to be a builder. I didn't want to be accountable to many people who buy of me when the building is under construction. I was contented what I have. I was not in a mood expansion at all. What do you feel when you look back at life? What has been the most significant moment in your life? Moments, I'm sure there have been several moments. Well, significant moment is my college. What my college said in the school song. Fight on. Don't give up. Keep trying. There's always another day. And that's been your motto and your guiding light. Yes. Wonderful. And what I have suggested during my term as 
corporator and legislator. I asked her passport office in Bangalore. People had to get their passports from Madras. They said, you are not a metro, you cannot get anything. Everything was rejected because you are not a metro. What is it to be a metro? I didn't understand. Today we are a metro. But you did, did succeed in getting us a passport office. Yes, eventually. Right. They had to expand. Passport office. We got the international airport. We got the metro. It should go on much faster. I don't know why. But I think Bangalore has done well. I must give credit to all the chief ministers who have been here. The chief minister himself cannot make things go faster. He can only pass orders. In Karnataka, we are a bit slow. Not lazy, slow. Anyway, God has blessed us and there's a good reason going slow. Today is the best internet city in India, recognized worldwide. If anybody knows any city in India, it's Bangalore. They don't talk of New Delhi anymore. True. Once I had suggested when I was a legislator that Bangalore should be made the capital of India. Huh. Why not? It is the IT capital of India now. No, but at least the winter sessions of parliament could be held here. But all those things should have been acted upon at that time. The new Bangalore should have come and then things should have fallen in the right place. Now to expect to do that is very tough. True. To take those dynamic decisions, things have passed down. There are courts, they'll oppose everything. My land should not go, everybody will oppose. We could have done something like Chandigarh, New Bangalore, like New Delhi. If we had done that, it would have been a great thing. I agree. So tell me, how do you keep yourself so active and alert? I know that you use a lot of social media platforms also. Is that a one way that you keep yourself abreast of everything that's happening around you? I keep in touch with friends socially. Okay. I go to weddings, parties, funerals, prayers. It's a mix of so many activities which I have not given up. So life goes on. What would be your advice to a younger person now? If you know, if you were looking at yourself when you set out in life, what advice would you give that young Satar Seth? Try your best. Don't give up. So you followed it. You're sure to succeed if you make real good efforts. Don't try shortcuts. It's been such a pleasure talking to you, Dr. Seth. Thank you so much for joining us today. And to our listeners, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Spotlight with Sandhya. Do subscribe to the podcast. I would love to hear from you. Until I'm back with another interesting guest, take care and bye-bye.